Were you handed a nipple shield in the hospital by a nurse or even a lactation consultant and then left to figure out feeding on your own or left to figure out how to wean from the nipple shield by yourself? So many people that I speak to in my private practice or on the podcast have had this experience. And so I think it's about time that we talk about nipple shields here on the Milk Baking Minutes. So whether you are a person who has experienced this yourself or you are a lactation professional, this is going to be an important episode and great food for thought as we think about nipple shields and their proper use. So let's get into it. When I began breastfeeding, I was blindsided by how difficult it was. I may have thought I was prepared, but having known only a handful of people who had ever done it and only seeing it up close a couple of times, I had a huge learning curve. Since then, I've become a doula, a childbirth educator, and an internationally board certified lactation consultant, or an IBCLC. I'm your host, Lo Nigrosh, and I welcome you to my podcast, The Milk Making Minutes, where we explore breastfeeding struggles and triumphs through the lens of systemic barriers so that you know your baby feeding struggles are not your fault and your triumphs really are the miracles you feel they are. So first of all, I used a nipple shield and so many people I talk to have used nipple shields. And anecdotally, I know that so many people say that using a nipple shield has saved their ability to feed breast milk to their babies and has provided a dose of sanity when they felt like giving up. So nipple shields are an amazing tool and also nipple shields have been around in some form or fashion for a really long time. I've seen really great creators like my friend and colleague and my own lactation consultant, Shelly Taft. She did this really great reel on Instagram about the various forms of nipple shields that have been used throughout history. So that's really cool that this has been a thing that people have implemented in various forms for a long time. That being said, Nipple shields are handed out by nurses, doctors, and even lactation consultants who don't have enough time to work with patients on the postpartum floor as a first resort when they really should be used as a last resort. Furthermore, they're often handed out without directions about follow-up and what it should look like to wean from that nipple shield or without the instruction that a nipple shield is a temporary solution. The most common reason that nipple shields are handed out is because of painful nursing or because a baby isn't latching. And this happens even more commonly in preterm infants, but it happens just for infants who are born at term as well. And so instead of really taking the time to figure out why the latch is so painful, because often lactation consultants working in a hospital don't have the time. Often the solution is, here's a nipple shield. This should help with the pain. You should be able to latch your baby with this. And it is a good stopgap, but it then there's no further instructions about what to do next. Some of the reasons that the latching difficulties occur when these shields get handed out are for flat or inverted nipples because there is a discrepancy between the size of the infant's mouth and the size of the 
person feeding the baby's nipple. So often if there's a large nipple and a small mouth, a nipple shield will get handed out because it helps the baby to latch on just a little bit more easily. If there's been any sort of birth trauma or the infant has an oral aversion, sometimes a nipple shield will get handed out because having that extra layer allows the infant to more easily take in the nipple. Or if they have developed a preference for an artificial nipple, then sometimes the nipple shield will allow them to latch to the nipple a little more easily. Sometimes if the infant has a tongue tie or an unusually shaped palate or an airway abnormality or a smaller receding jaw, and they're having trouble sucking for any of these reasons, then the nipple shield can help for that. If the parent is dreading nursing because the pain is so bad, then that might be a reason to use a nipple shield, at least temporarily. And if there's overabundant milk supply right off the bat, and the baby is having trouble managing that milk flow, then the nipple shields can be a way to deal with that while you get the milk flow under control. And sometimes if there's a history of sexual abuse in the parent, having that nipple shield can be a way to create just a barrier between the person's body and the baby and Sometimes that can be just enough to allow the person to feed the baby with their body if that is something they are interested in doing. So if they've expressed an interest but are also a little bit fearful, then the nipple shield might be a bridge. There are definitely downsides to handing out nipple shields or overusing them, which is why they are typically not a good first strategy. We really need to be helping dyads figure out the root causes of their pain or the root causes of an insufficient suck. Nipple shields cannot improve milk intake if the problem is low milk production. They cannot improve damaged nipples if the root cause is not identified and they cannot take the place of a lactation professional helping to identify the root causes. There is some data to indicate that long-term use of nipple shields can impact milk transfer and can uh, lead to slow weight gain in the infant and can decrease duration of breastfeeding. So nipple shields can definitely preserve nursing in some situations, But in other situations, it can lead to early cessation of nursing. So if you are being offered a nipple shield or if you have been offered a nipple shield at the hospital, my recommendation is that you also figure out what your aftercare plan is going to be once you leave the hospital. It definitely can be a great tool there in the beginning, especially because so many hospitals don't have enough lactation consultants. There's too many patients and not enough time to see them all. And so it's a temporary solution. But if you're in a lot of pain or if your infant is having trouble latching and you are offered a nipple shield, fine, uh, because that definitely can keep you nursing a little longer in the beginning, but it can lead to more problems down the road. And so my recommendation is that you accept the nipple shield, if that's what's going to keep you nursing in the short run, but then you ask for ways to reach out to a private practice lactation consultant once you leave the hospital so that you can figure out your next steps. When it comes to sizing of your nipple shield, Often lactation consultants will just hand out the same size to everybody. And so you can ask if they have multiple sizes. Some lactation consultants size for the baby's mouth and some size for the parent. I tend to be of the mind that you want to size for the parent's nipple because if the nipple shield is 
sized because the infant's mouth is small. And if you get a nipple shield that has a diameter that is much smaller than the parent's nipple, then that is going to be creating pressure on the nipple and could reduce the milk flow over time and could lead to more pain in the nipple and a reduction in milk supply. And so get the smallest nipple shield that fits comfortably on your breast. And the sizes vary. The lowest size is usually about 16 millimeters. And then the biggest size is usually about 28 millimeters. But I would say most hospitals usually have at least a 20 and a 24 or a 21 and a 24. Usually you have two sizes to choose from. So if you get the 24 and it feels a little big, you can usually ask for one size down at least. It is really important when you are latching your baby onto the nipple shield that you are still working on getting that deep latch and that the shield is going way back into the baby's mouth because that is going to trigger a stronger suck in the baby and that is going to lead to longer durations of nursing, which is going to increase your milk supply over time. And if the baby becomes accustomed to latching more shallowly on the nipple shield, then even if it doesn't hurt as badly because there's a barrier there, it's going to be harder for the baby to latch properly once you try to wean from the shield and then the skill is going to have to be retaught and it will make that next step way more challenging. Once you've used the shield for a little while, reach out to a private practice lactation consultant. Let them know you've been using a shield and you would like to figure out your next steps for weaning. Now, even before that, or as you're trying to figure out who you are going to work with, my recommendation is that you make your bare breast or bare chest a really comfortable cozy, stress-free place for your baby to be. So as much skin-to-skin time as you can possibly provide your baby, even when you're not feeding. So they associate your bare body with comfort and they don't associate it with stress. And then they might especially during sleepy times or times when they're feeling extra cozy and times when they're not super hungry, they may begin to nuzzle up and try to start latching even without that shield. And that's great. So you can start trying to do some non-shield latches. You could start with putting on the shield and then once that initial milk release begins, you can remove the shield and then see if baby will go back on once they've had that initial fill of milk. But some babies, they're not so easily tricked. And so you can make sure they get a feeding. And then once they aren't really hungry anymore, you can lay there skin to skin, take off the shield and see if they would like to just nurse for comfort without the shield. And then same thing, sometimes you can do some dream feeds or some sleepy time feeds without the shield. So lay next to the baby while they're sleepy, present your bare body to them and see if they will latch on in a kind of sleepy state before they have woken up fully aroused and hungry. And they may take your bare body and nurse without that barrier of the shield. Some babies take to this really quickly and the transition is really smooth. Some babies, it might take even a couple of months to make that transition. And if you're trying this on your own and it's just not working, there may be something going on anatomically with your baby that is making nursing without the shield really difficult. And that is really when I would highly suggest you work with a lactation consultant who can help you determine what your next steps should be. With that being said, if you are looking for a lactation professional who can help you wean from a nipple shield or with any other difficulty that you might be having, I would love to be the person who helps you tune into your body and your baby and build your self-confidence. 
You can find all of my information at www.quabinbirthservices.com. It's linked in the show notes. And in most cases, I can bill your insurance or at the very least provide you a super bill for reimbursement. And if this podcast has helped you, please rate and review it on your favorite podcasting app and share it with a friend. Thanks. Bye.